Hey everybody, Boris Slash from BK Force. Welcome to our Forex Weekly Technicals for 3.31.404 of 2014. Where are the trades next week? Well, looking at the euro dollar, obviously, the week next uh, that's coming up is going to be pretty critical for the currency pair. We have the ECB meeting on Thursday. We have the NFPs on Friday. Uh, the euro has certainly been under a tremendous amount of selling pressure pretty much ever since Draghi entertained the idea of negative interest rates. We, we had a big crack that pushed the, uh, the euro all the way down. Every rally has been a sell. And that's sort of exactly what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, that every rally is a sell. And so far, that's very much held true. Euro definitely still looks to the downside um, on a longer term basis. But what you did find today, which was kind of interesting, was that we found pretty decent um, rock bottom support here at 37. And the pair has managed to bounce off of that support all the way out to 3750s. So whether this is going to be a little bit of a basing situation front of the week and then perhaps a resolution of that um, of that price action as the week completes. The critical thing, of course, is going to be, I think, the ECB meeting on Thursday. If, if Draghi does not accommodate in any meaningful form, we may have a little bit of a dead cat bounce. But having said this, the euro... Um, whatever bounces in the euro that we have right now really are unsustainable in my opinion until and unless we can recover 38.50 and hold it on a closing basis that would put us much more into a neutral structure and could possibly suggest that this was uh, this corrective wave is pretty much over but generally um, unless we see some sort of price action that really takes us uh, all the way out to these levels um, it's going to be very difficult to, to get to want to get bullish euros at this point unless you're just simply bargain hunting and trying to scalp um, the move to the, uh, to the downside. A break here, though, would really put us into a much more negative construct. So a break of 37 really opens up a run all the way out here, potentially for a double bottom test of the 3750s. So that's how the week shapes up for the euro. Um, and that's definitely going to be a very, very interesting one for that pair as we go along. Now, as the week came to a close this week, what was interesting here is that dollar yen, which has just been absolutely dead, this, this 102.50 has just been a complete cap, finally broke to the upside. And assuming that we close out the day here above the uh, 102.50, that would suggest actually a relatively bullish structure for yen and a bullish structure for yen crosses we'll go through the yen crosses in a second but generally the fact that the yen has taken out this one or two seventy nine is very positive we obviously have a slew of u.s data next week and of course all of this can get reversed pretty badly if we get a uh, horrendous nfp number but generally given the fact that weekly jobless claims have been pretty good given the fact that most of the economic indicators have not been horrid have just sort of been hovering uh within expectation um, it's unlikely that we have a surprising shock to the downside um, next week. And assuming we don't, that could provide us even more fuel here for a possible run towards the 103.50. That's the next big area of resist here for um, for dollar yen. Um, and if that can get captured, then we then we really built up a very nice base for a full-on move towards the yearly highs at 105.50. Uh, but that's too early um, to speculate at this point. For now, all we know is that perhaps this base has really finally been built and we finally have an inkling of a breakout here as 102.50 closes out. Yen crosses start to look uh, much more attractive. Cable, on the other hand, uh, is having this V-shaped recovery, relatively decent, but it is facing pretty stiff uh, selling here. It's 6650, 6700. It's got a very, very chunky area here that it needs to overcome. If it does overcome that and close above 6700, that really does set it up for a full-on assault of the uh, yearly highs of 68. Um, and that will be a story where um, the market begins to really price in the possibility of interest rate hikes before the end of this year. UK economy doing quite well, so on and so forth. For now, though, um, this still looks like a V-shaped recovery within an, a corrective phase and we may be coming up here to, to a, a pretty meaningful resist at 67 if that fails over here we could be correcting right back down to 65 as cable still tries to uh, over work out all of this uh, overbought conditions um aussie on the other hand very very powerful move here um all the way through the week but one of the interesting things that you'll notice here this is one of the um things that Kathy and I look at quite a lot. The rule of seven, where you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of sort of consecutive higher highs, statistically, very, very difficult to overcome. So meaning meaning that, that once you have sort of seven consecutive days of higher highs, um, the probability of an eighth day diminishes considerably, and a probability of a near-term top really comes into play. You can see that the RSC certainly, after outperforming the week, um, everybody for a week, week and a half, maybe now finally starting to move into a little bit of an underperformance uh, move 
if it uh, if it kind of stalls out of this 93. Now, on the other hand, if it does take out 93, if this is just simply a, a pause, and we take out 93s, um, the next run, of course, is going to be towards the 94, 95 level. That's in, sort of the just before 95, the 94.50 level. That's really been the uh, next big point of resistance. I know it certainly create a very, very powerful rounded bottom here in the Aussie. But for now, I'd be very cautious. This 93 um, turn here, the rejection of 93, could be meaningful. And if next week we start breaking the lows of the Aussie, so the lows here are around, what, 92.37. Basically, if next week, if 92 is given, that would suggest that we may have been made, may have made a near-term top. And the Aussie, which was the outperformer this week, could be the underperformer next week. Uh, Kiwi looks a little better, but also facing the same sort of a headwind where the 87, rejection of the, the 87, um, is, is quite significant. So we'll see. Um, it's it's always dangerous to call to call a turn. Um, it may just simply be a pause, but all but it's certainly worthy to be very cautious, and I would not want to get along these pairs until and unless these, these levels were broken. So 87 has to be taken out to the top side, and um, 93 has to be taken out to the top side in Aussie in order to get really comfortable with the trade. Uh, Dollar CAD, last trade we want to take a look at. Dollar CAD finding, what a surprise, finding support at 110. Um, what is interesting here, though, is that we may be finally carving out some strength for the loony. What I mean by here is if you look at this on a, on a longer-term basis, what do we see here? 112s. Um, as a natural, natural resist level, right? So we uh, we hit a top here, we hit a top here, we pushed a little bit through here on uh, um, a little bit more extreme panic um, to the top side. But now we've kind of uh, moved to the downside. We do have Canadian employment data. We, that would be interesting to see because if, if that data starts to show an inkling of positive recovery, that is North America finally pulling North Canada along with it, uh, we could potentially have a move um, probably all the way down to 110, 109. So one of the interesting things here is we talked about that Aussie Kiwi overperformance, right? Of course, overperformance has also been against the caddy. If caddy becomes better bid, um, then the overperformance of CAD against the uh, um, Australian dollar could be in play here. So it's just as you see this big flame out in Aussie CAD, this could be a really potentially uh, interesting turn trade here with relatively limited risk. So where are we here? 103.15 is the high, right? Basically less than 100 points away. Um, to take a spec here, this could be the top. The Canadian dollar has um, is going to be now stronger than the Australian dollar on a relative basis. Not, not a bad idea to consider into next week if you sort of bet on the idea that the calm dollar, that the Asian, um, the, the Aust Asia Pacific region calm dollars are going to be weaker than North American calm dollars. Um, Kiwi CAD. Um, not as clear, but, def but you definitely have a very, very defined top here as well, which is just above 96, uh, although it's making a little bit more of a rounded bottom. So clearly, um, Aussie is the weaker of the two, but still, um, the possibility that the Canadian dollar could, could outperform both the Kiwi and the, and the uh, odd, the odd being my favorite uh, turn trade, um, certainly something to worth, uh, worth taking a look at next week. Now, taking a look at the uh, yen complex, because uh, we talked about the fact that the yen may be finally breaking out. So let's take a look at, you know, euro yen is the weakest because euro is certainly um, <clears throat> certainly not uh, performing well. And I said that euro is still a sell in the rally. So we have this tug of war between the yen and, and the euro. We did today have a big breakout because obviously euro, uh, euro covered up and so did the yen. But you still have pretty decent resist here at 142s. Uh, you still have higher lows. Um, it doesn't quite look... Um, I would say if it does take out 142s and stays there, then it does set us up for a potential run towards the 144s. Uh, but this is not the best looking cross. Uh, pound yen, on the other hand, does look quite much better. It is um, it is broken through this key 170 level. This 172 is the big overhead in um, in pound yen. If we can if we can recover 172, then you do have the chance here to push all the way out to to, to the peak highs of 73, 73, 50, uh, and then. If you think that the calm dollars may not necessarily correct as much as um, as they appear, then certainly um, the big big moves in the calm dollars on the on the yen crosses uh, could be uh, uh, could continue. Dollar uh, Aussie yen does face this big big resist at 95.65, but um, they, it could have enough juice to to push through 95.50 level. Certainly, although it also looks very very seriously overbought on, on this uh, seven seven day rule here one two three four five six seven today's the seventh day where it's had a continuous um, continuous rally um, although if you look at the past history the yen crosses don't necessarily um, apply so for example here you can take a look at one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven it was actually an eleven day rally before 
um, there was a correction. But when the correction came, it wiped out like about um, eight days worth of gains here. So um, I do think this kind of very, very sharp, very, very nasty little cut uh, could occur in um you know i see and so i just you know i would be uh, i would be begin to be to, to be careful here um and uh certainly on a i would put a stop on on the break of the day's lows anywhere you're trailing because as you can see when when the turn comes it can break five or six days worth of lows uh, in a single day um the other hand kiwi yen looks kind of uh, still still looks pretty good uh does not have any resist here to, to the top side uh, and maybe a, a, you know, it may extend a little bit more. It is not nearly as um, concentratedly overbought as Aussie yen um, is uh, to the top side. Um, this actually brings me down to the idea that so if Aussie now becomes a relative weakling, one of the things that we've seen here is one of the things we liked a lot earlier was the turn in the Aussie Kiwi pair from the 106s, and that worked out very, very well. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about this, and this thing just went up now to um, to 107. But now this 107.50 clearly the top. Uh, and we may be, it may be a time to revisit sort of uh, the 106 level here as we have a corrective move uh, on the Aussie side. Um, the last thing on the um, yen crosses is perhaps the CAD yen, which is something that does look better both on a relative basis and on the yen basis here, although we do face the 93, 94 corridor as a big resist level. But having made this kind of a W bottom formation, that's a very, very generally very positive formation technically, suggests a longer term turn. Um, and uh, probably on the Young Crosses looks as one of the more interesting ideas for next week. So wishing you guys the best of luck, tremendous amount of data next week, quite a lot of interesting um, combinations, and uh, watch the calm dollars on a relative weakness basis because that maybe is what's developing as this week comes to a close. Boris Schlossberg for BK Forex, over and out.